Welcome to this Sunday where we get to hear the encouraging word of God and may we trust his encouraging word to us this morning. We'll begin our service with the opening hymn 111. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we'll pray. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Please be seated. As we'll sing the first two verses of hymn 388.
our first reading from the book of Numbers as the Israelites are traveling to the land of Canaan. We're going to see that rebellion against God and his leader brought his wrath, but trust in that word of God saved them. They set out from Mount Hor along the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became very impatient along the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Look, there is no food, there is no water, and we are disgusted by this worthless food. The Lord sent venomous snakes among the people, and the snakes bit the people. As a result, many people from Israel died. The people went to Moses and said, We have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he takes the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed on behalf of the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a venomous snake and put it on a pole. If anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will live. Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a, the pole. If a snake had bitten anyone, if that person looked at the bronze snake, he lived. That is God's word. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, where we're reminded of the mercy of God being shown in the love he has for us in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but God, because he is rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. He also raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He did this so that in the coming ages he might demonstrate the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Indeed, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared in advance so that we would walk in them. As God's word of encouragement. Please stand. And I'd invite you to join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, you promised to comfort those who mourn and to satisfy those who hunger. In time of trial, remind me of your cross, where you endured the curse of my sin. When I am weak, teach me to depend on you for strength. At your time, deliver me from suffering and distress. Amen. Then our gospel lesson is from the book of John chapter 3. Jesus Christ is God's loving gift to mankind that brings salvation to mankind. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the basis for the judgment. The light has come into the world, yet people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. In fact, everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light or else his deeds would be exposed. But the one who does what is true comes toward the light in order that his deeds may be seen as having been done in connection with God. That is the word of Jesus. Please be seated. So we'll continue with hymn 120.
the introduction to the book of Ephesians, you would see that the Apostle Paul is writing this letter while under house arrest for two years. Now, house arrest, it's not as bad as prison, but it's still not a, a whole bunch of fun. The Apostle Paul, he had some freedom, but he didn't have the ability to travel and see all the churches that he had helped establish. He didn't have the ability to go and, and visit the people that he had made relationships with. He was kind of held to this little area that he had to stay in. But though Paul couldn't go and visit those churches, his heart still went out to those people. The Apostle Paul might have been thinking, you know what, the two years that I got here under house arrest waiting, awaiting trial is not a whole lot of fun. But I bet, I bet there are other people out there who are not having fun either. I bet there are other people out there who are suffering. I bet there are other people out there who are sad and having great struggles. And so what the Lord did is through the Apostle Paul, he had him write this message of comfort, this message of encouragement where he starts. But God, but God, because he is rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. He also raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He did this so that in the coming ages he might demonstrate the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Indeed, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. In these verses, and even in the verses prior to these, the Apostle Paul, he has to remind the people of some not-so-uplifting news. He got to remind the people that before they came to faith in Jesus, they followed the ways of this evil world. Before they came to faith in Jesus, they were dead in their sins, and sadly, as a result, they were going to go to hell. That was the sad truth. But Paul also got to share with them that now message of comfort and encouragement. That message of God's mercy for those people. That message of God's love for those people. That God in his great love laid his son on the cross for them. That God in his love had his son die for them. That God in his love didn't treat them as they deserved, but treated them as his holy son deserved. By cleansing them of their sins and giving them a place in heaven. And that wonderful news that wonderful gift of Jesus, that wonderful gift of heaven was enough to make Paul, even while he was in house arrest, even while he was left for dead one day because they thought they finally stoned him to death, it was enough to give Paul reason to smile because he knew salvation was his. And that message of Christ was enough to encourage and uplift all the people that he had met throughout his life to give them hope, to give them joy, no matter what season in life they found themselves in. It is that message of Christ, that message of encouragement, that message of hope that you and I need to hear every day. We need to hear of that message of Jesus. We need to hear of God's rich mercy, how he, because of Christ Jesus, gives us the kingdom of heaven. We need to hear that message because we live in a world that is polluted with sinfulness. And we ourselves are reminded of our own sinfulness on a daily basis. I mean, you see the sinfulness in the world around us. Just, just look at our government as it funds and supports the murder of babies through abortion. 
look at sinfulness in society as more and more Christian churches are wandering from the truth of Christ and making their own paths which lead away from Christ. We see this sinfulness in the world around us. And what does it do? The more sin we see around us, the farther we see our world <laughs> follow the, the way of Satan, the more it can devastate us. The more it can crush our spirit and the more it can make us feel a little bit hopeless and helpless. In fact, the more it can make us burn with a little bit of anger. But you and I also have to contend with our own consciences that afflict us. Our consciences burden us for those things that we have thought. Our consciences weigh us down for that unkind word or that foolish joke that we told to someone. And it eats us up. We have the guilt of the sin of Peter. You remember what Peter did when it was convenient for him? He denied knowing who Jesus Christ was because he thought, if yeah, I know who Jesus is, it was going to cost him his life. And maybe that's what we do when it is beneficial for us, when we find a way to get advancement in our place of employment or with our friends. When it is beneficial, we'll deny knowing Jesus. When it is beneficial for us, we'll deny following his word because it's for our good. We'd even have to admit that there are probably times we get mad at God. And we have to carry that guilt. We get mad at God because of what he is allowing to happen in our personal lives, the struggles that he is allowing us to deal with. We get mad at God because of what he is allowing to happen in the greater straight stage around us. We burn with anger because we don't see a God of action or a God of love or a God of power. We get mad or disappointed. And that guilt, it can devastate us because we realize that we are sinning. The actions we have done are wrong. And we know what we deserve for what we've done. We deserve his wrath. We deserve that spiritual death. We deserve eternal damnation. And that is something that none of us wants to experience and that is something that none of us wants to carry on our shoulders and that's why God gives us this. But God, because he is rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, made us alive with Christ. The mercy of God. You guys know what mercy is. Mercy is not getting what we deserved. And you think of Paul. He is a prime example of God's mercy being shown. Paul was that hunter down of Christians. He wanted to eradicate Christianity and the teaching of Jesus. And God should have just had enough of you, Paul, and let him live his life and then send him to hell for what he had done. That's not what God did at all. He took that great persecutor, Paul, who should have paid for his sins. God came to him and created faith in him. God came to the apostle Paul and treated him not as he deserved, but created faith in Jesus Christ. And the Lord laid on the apostle Paul that wonderful truth that because of Jesus Christ, Paul has been set free. That Paul didn't have to let the time when he approved of Stephen being stoned to death, he didn't have to let that guilt weigh him down anymore. He didn't have to let the 
feeling of misery of going down and locking up and ripping apart families and throwing them in jail all because they believed in Jesus. Eat them up anymore. The Lord showed mercy to Paul by saying, your sins have been forgiven. Washed away in that precious blood of Jesus. Oh, and Paul, you don't have to do work for my love. You don't have to do work for the forgiveness of sins because I am giving it to you as a wonderful gift, free of charge. The Apostle Paul experienced that great mercy and that great love of God as he was assured in Jesus he has been saved. And that mercy is what you and I get to experience too. God doesn't treat you as you deserve. He doesn't hold your works, your thoughts, your words over your head. He doesn't look at you and say, remember what you did here? Remember how you treated your spouse? Remember what you did to your child? Remember how you cheated your employer? No, what does God do? He directs you to Christ, and he directs his own eyes to Christ, and he says, here is what my son has done for you. As I placed him on that cross, as I laid your sins on him, as I had him, Jesus Christ, suffer and die in your place, so that you wouldn't be sent to hell. So that your sins wouldn't damn you anymore. That's what God's mercy did for you. It freed you from your sins. Releasing you from that wrath of God. When you've acted like Peter, and for your own enjoyment, denied knowing Christ and his word. You have been forgiven. When all that is going around on in this world leads you to yell and scream and want to curse God and get angry with him, he says, even that I have taken away. It is forgiven. That's the wonderful message of Jesus Christ. Here's what he says. Indeed, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. Nothing on your part. All of it has been accomplished by God. The work, the action, the gift. Yours because of God's love. And what can that do for you? Paul in prison could still smile. You with whatever trial you are facing still have this wonderful truth that has been worked into your heart that you are God's child, that you are an heir of heaven, and that it will not be taken from you because God has so lovingly given you that gift of salvation. Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you for reconciling us to yourself through the sufferings and death of your dear Son. Through him we have confidence to enter into your presence and to bring you our prayers and petitions. Out of the infinite bounty of your goodness, grant us a rich measure of your spirit. Let the love of Christ fill your church so that it may flourish in all good works. Help us show love and compassion for all who are in need. Bestow on the nations of the earth the knowledge of your mercy, that they may turn to you, the only God, and find salvation in you. Strengthen our faith so that we unfailingly come to you in prayer for all our bodily needs. Give a special measure of your power to those who are sorrowful or mourning, to those who are in pain or sickness, to those who may be in temptation or peril, that they may receive your blessed aid. 
and help us patiently endure any chastening and afflictions you permit to come into our lives, knowing that you are using them in love to prepare us for that joyful communion with you, which is ours for all eternity. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private prayers. Accept our prayers and intercessions and provide for all our needs, not because we are worthy, but for the sake of Jesus, our Savior, who has also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and always give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated, as we'll close with the last hymn. 